Okay, we've got a way out. You can drive that thing? I'll have to. Let's go. Not yet. Ivankov mentioned the cargo zone when I tried to get information about the girl. I have to investigate. See if we can find any clues of where... where she might be. All yours. I'll stand guard. Without a gun? I always carry one. No. I prefer not to use it unless I have to. They could have killed us. But they didn't. You should be proud of yourself, not mad at me. <laughs> Just let him read his book. Why don't you like shooting? I did it once. I wasn't good at it. Never again. It's better with his fists, I guess. You're not going to help me? No. <laughs> no? I'm not a detective. And there's too much blood in this tragedy to put it down. You want blood? I promise you, we've got oceans of it right here. And unlike the blood in your Shakespeare, this is real. Yet another reason. Hmm. You can't handle the real thing. So this is closest to us. Let's take a look at it. Okay, subjects. Doesn't look like there's anything about any kids, at least I can tell. My God, what is this? Bloody paw prints, made by dogs, most likely. Yeah, and there's some... Blood stains trampled by the bare feet of at least four different people. There's a whip, too. Oh, this one's... They were wearing shoes. The boots that left these prints were fairly new, to judge by the clean outline of the sole. Okay, take a look at the whip. No? Alright. Anything up here? Looks like a scoreboard. Some of the competitors have letters and a number. But towards the end, there are others that only have a number. Did they sick dogs on people or something? Ivankov said he dreamt of becoming a boxer. Did his dreams come true down here? There's more than blood on here. There's chunks of brain. Oh, goodness gracious. The leather's ripped, torn, by teeth. It just looks like some posters.
Okay, so it looks like that there is some dog fighting. But yeah, maybe my first guess was right. They used people too with the dogs. Based on what I got out of Ivankov and these pieces of evidence, I guess he's a human trafficker. Is there evidence that proves Ivankov was trafficking in humans? Um, well, let's get some more evidence first. There's six. The marks seem to have been made by teeth, although I can't be sure. Ah, uh, guess so. Animal fur. Most likely Just dog. Number. I know KKK was six, so. Bullet casings. He probably shot at whatever was in the cage. Aww. I don't like that. Why would you do that? I think they tried to clean up urine stains with some kind of powerful cleaning product made with ammonia. Oh, that's great. Ammonia well, really hopes that urine smell. these less than 20 years ago to make life easier for lumberjacks. I wonder how long it was before the mob was using them for their own ends. <laughs> this is fresh blood, not more than a day old. Mm. Dried blood. Been there a while. Ah, so you're pretty good with forensics. Some scratches. Marks left by the chainsaw, no doubt. A cross painted by hand in blood. Was it the prisoner's own hand and their own blood? Sickening smell, revolting stains. This was a toilet for whoever was locked up here. The diameter of these shackles is pretty conclusive. Wrists or ankles. There's still some water and the food hasn't dried out completely. This cage was occupied recently. Hmm. I think it says Abdelkader, the owner of the biggest prostitution ring in Santa Esperanza. Oh. Holy Christ. And well, they probably also... Oh, man. Yeah, he totally was trafficking humans. Let's look at the board. Size for wrists and ankles. A bucket that contained excrement. Recent traces of food and drink. No doubt about it. There were people in these cages. The size of the shackles, the troughs for food and drink, and the buckets for waste prove it. Can I prove that the people held here were sold? The cages are labeled with letters or names and numbers. A scoreboard, like a knockout tournament. Mm. A scoreboard, like a No. A metal table on which cages that likely house dogs. No. Human bodies. This metal a metal table. No. Chewed and stained. A scoreboard. No. Okay, we don't have enough information. Mm -hmm. 
don't think there's anything else for us to check down here. Let me just double check. go into that wall. Why not? Now let's see. Find some other things. Okay, we already looked at that. Let's see what's back here. Can we go through? Yep. Oh, the showers, I think. They're still damp. For kids? Quite the contrast with the rest of the room. I'd almost say it was cleaner than my shower at home. Bolt cutter. Damn, where's the key? Oh, thank you, game. All the way up there. Alright, so maybe we can find some evidence of the customers. There's SC. Could this be Sophia Capone? In any case, it seems that someone paid an extremely high price. Yeah, 2,500 bucks is a lot of money back in the... I, I'm assuming this is the 50s. Is 20 years after um, the I can't remember what the what it was called, but basically when alcohol was uh, banned. Specific orders: short, red-haired adolescent, middle-aged white man, young Negro girl. Looks like Ivankov was paid for some of them, but some were rejected. A female police officer. Alice? Kulikov, the most versatile vodka in the world. A receipt from the most expensive children's clothes store in Santa Esperanza, issued yesterday. Probably for Sophia. I wonder how many death sentences came out of this thing. Guido Colombo. According to Capone, that's the name Sophia's kidnapper used to pass himself off as her uncle when he took her from the school. We owe this beautiful work of forgery to the talent of Carlo Baccarini. May he rest in peace. Hmm. According to Ivankov's register, not all his merchandise is accepted by the customer. The labels on the cages could refer to the customers who buy human merchandise from Ivankov. 
I base this assumption on the register in which some of the pieces are marked as acceptable and paid for, and others are not. What does he do with the ones that are rejected? The metal table on which bodies were mutilated recently. Uh, no. Human bodies, dismembered and piled up like trash. No. Oh, he fights the them. A scoreboard, like a knockout tournament. He has them fight. Cages that likely house dogs. If they're rejected. Chewed and stained with blood and body tissue. So I guess the female police officer isn't Alice. With all the pieces that are rejected by his customers, Ivankov organizes fights, probably to the death, between prisoners and between prisoners and dogs. Maybe even between prisoners and his own men. What is the fate of those that lose? Human bodies, dismembered and piled up like trash. The metal table on which bodies were mutilated recently. Oh, that... <laughs> it seems clear that those that lose in combat are hacked to pieces. Some of them while they're still alive. I'd say they're then thrown into the water, but there's no proof. All right, so we just need to get the key. No doubt about it. Ivankov likes boxing. I knew it. <laughs> Milton was a boxer. That's how he recognized him. Okay. Still need to find that key. There's a safe here. I don't know the combo though. Change the safe code to last night's winner. Don't worry about the men, they can't read. Okay. So the person who won was Apollo, I think. The, sa the key might be in the safe, that's possible. Hey, I wonder if I can uh, talk to Milton about that, that magazine. So you have a sweet tooth? Yeah. And that's why they called you the sugar kid? <sighs> All right. What do you want to know? Uh, the last fight. I'm sorry about Billy Johnson. I don't know how it happened. I didn't mean to hit him so hard. Well, I did, but you catch my drift. First of all, I should have been letting him beat me. The fight was fixed, but I wasn't in the mood, and I took it out on poor Billy, a white boy who probably had no idea was rigged. You satisfied? Anything else? Why did you shoot those people? The white guy's friends follow the black guy who accidentally killed him. They're 20 at least. They start insulting him. The black guy takes it. After the insults, the spitting starts. The black guy takes it. The shoving. The black guy takes it. Kick from the back. The black guy takes it. Another and another. The black guy turns and fights back. And the mob, growing by the minute, falls on him. Someone fires a shot in the air. Everyone backs off. That someone is the dead guy's brother. He sticks a gun in the black guy's face, but the black guy's quicker. He grabs the gun, shoots him in the chest. While the crowd runs, the black guy empties the gun, not pausing to take aim. One dead, four wounded, 13 years. Reduced due to temporary insanity. You mm -hmm. satisfied? Anything else? Yeah, one more. <laughs> Sorry, I wanna make sure I do everything, because apparently there's a trophy. How did you survive on Gore Island? Alphonse. When I arrived, he was still in his prime, and he ruled the roost. He protected me until years later, I had to protect him. There you are. Now you know who I am. So, what's the secret ingredient? The deal was that you would tell me who you are, 
and I found it out for myself. <laughs> oh. You win, my friend. For now. All right. Let's get back to this. Let's take a look. Maybe it's on here. Two oh nine. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yep, there it is. Bingo. Anything else in that safe? No. Ugh. Fine, fine. Now we can open up that freight. giant container has been used to hold children. Was Sophia Capone held in the container? Let's take a look. Looks like they are soiled. Boys' underwear. Dirty. Doesn't look like the dress Capone said Sophia was wearing. Mm. <laughs> well, Sophia was wearing a blue dress with flowers that I personally ordered for her from Italy. And she was also wearing white ballet shoes with daisies embroidered on them. Prisoners were treated reasonably well, all things considered. No adult could sleep here. No adult could sleep here. Okay. child before they draw something like that. What the? Oh, we already figured. Ah. Okay. The girl's shoe identical to the one that Capone said his granddaughter Sophia was wearing. Someone paid a lot of money for a piece of merchandise that could well be Sophia Capone. No, not there. A hefty receipt for children's clothes. No. Children's shampoo. Someone wanted them to look perfectly presentable. Towels that are still damp. Hmm. The forgeries belonging to Sophia Capone's kidnapper. A shoe 
identical to the one described by Capone, and the documents used by the person pretending to be Sophia's uncle make it certain that she was held here. Sophia Capone was here, but did she get out? Someone paid a lot of money for a piece of merchandise that could well be Sophia Capone. According to the register, Ivankov was paid for Sophia, which means she was handed over to his customer. Sophia Capone got out of here, but did she get out alive? Yeah, it seems like they Towels prettied her up down. before they sold her. A hefty receipt for children's clothes with yesterday's date. Children's shampoo. Someone wanted them to look perfectly presentable. The damp towels, the children's shampoo, and the receipt from the children's clothes shop indicate that they washed and dressed the children before taking them away. I strongly doubt that they washed them just to kill them, so there is reason to believe that Sophia Capone is still alive. Yeah, those clothes were not cheap. Here. Let's go. Already? I thought I'd have time to finish Act 4. Are you doubting my efficiency as a detective? That would depend on the quality of your conclusions. <laughs> Ivan Cobb is a human trafficker. He has various customers who make specific requests. Slavers, imps, God knows what else. Kidnaps them and puts them in these cages, shackling them and feeding them like animals until he's ready to complete the order. When he has enough, or maybe when the designated day comes around, his customer comes here and decides which of his catches are satisfactory, which are not. What does he do with the rejects? For many people, this would be a problem, but not for Ivankov. Like a true boxing fan, he organizes fights between the failed candidates. Bloody tournaments, possibly to the death. I'm sure his men place bets, and that the whole sick spectacle, like the Roman circus, helps keep morale high. But, as in the circus, it's not just people that fight. There are animals, too. In these cages, Ivankov kept dogs. He forces the survivors to fight them, wearing boxing gloves, until the dogs tear them apart. And if anyone survives, Ivankov's own men finish the job. This leads us to the next problem. What does Ivankov do with the bodies? Easy. He cuts them up on this table, one by one. Alive, even if they had the bad luck not to die in the arena. And then, I don't know, maybe he throws them overboard, but that's always risky. Maybe if we interrogate him when he wakes up, he can tell us more. But that's not what really interests us. What really interests us is what's inside or what was inside this container. In recent weeks, Ivankov has kidnapped nine children for an anonymous client who pays him a fortune for each one of them. The most expensive item of all has been given the initials SC, or Sophia, as proved by one of her shoes, which I found in there. <laughs> Today, or possibly last night, the customer took delivery of the children and paid in full. Before this, Ivankov bought them new clothes and gave them a shower. Why would he do that? Is it to sell them into adoption and wealthy families? I very much doubt it, but I can't figure out another reason. It's probably what I that do cult. Think is that his client doesn't want to leave loose ends. I think he forced him to get rid of the rest of his prisoners. This is why they organized fights yesterday. Dismembered the combatants and even killed all the dogs. They shot them in the cages. Are you joking? No. Oh man. Oh, 
Let's take this piece of shit to Capone. What? They're old friends. I'm sure Alphonse will be happy to... Out of the question. <sighs> you saw what he did to Burke. You want him to do it again? Want us to lose another witness? Christ, 20 years ago, I let a child murderer slip through my fingers. I won't let that happen again. What if the two cases are related? Not gonna persuade you, am I? No. Okay. Ugh.